eLabs are a one-hour interactive video conference in which an education specialist teaches and inspires students to explore the world of science around them. And I have a type of alcohol that you don't have at home. It's called methyl alcohol. And I'm going to measure out 10 milliliters of that methyl alcohol here. Into my right because they know I know what's going to happen. <laughs> Do they know what's going to happen? No, they're laughing at me because they know that I know what's going to happen. Oh. I've, I've <laughs> told them about methyl alcohol, but we've never actually used it. So today's your lucky day. Then you'll get to see it on on screen. I'm going to put that methyl alcohol into my water jug, and then I'm going to just give it a little bit of a shake. Now, alcohols are very, we call them volatile. Do you know what it means to be uh, volatile? When you put alcohol on your skin, what does your skin feel like almost immediately? It feels kind of cold, right? Right before you get a shot. Have you ever felt it feel kind of cold like that? They, alcohols, by their very nature, go from a liquid to a gas. They evaporate very quickly. So I'm spreading this around and I'm filling my container here with methyl alcohol vapors. All right, now we're going to dim the lights a little bit for you. I'm going to do a combustion reaction. Okay. So a combustion reaction burns a hydrocarbon and it makes carbon dioxide and water. So when okay, Team Bravo, you told me that we have some suspects that can be eliminated based on their alibi. Let's go ahead and look at the two suspects you told me that we could be eliminated. You said the first one was Lisa McCulley. Let's open up her file. And her alibi in question says that she was covering the brown, groundbreaking of a new wing at the Centertown Mall. You're absolutely correct because she is in, uh, working for the newspaper. She was at the mall. It was verified by Patrolman Chad Simmons. So on your interface, go ahead and click the button that says Eliminate Suspect. That will gray out her file on your interface meaning she's no longer a possible suspect. The second person you told us was Ronald Dolan. Let's look at his file. Once again, it says he was ver the alibi was verified by Patrolman Chad Simmons. He was deep sea fishing in Ocean City, Maryland. Once again, let's, let's um, eliminate the suspect by clicking on that, that box and graying out that suspect. Now, everyone's interface should have those two people eliminated. That means we have remaining suspects. We're going to go through the rest of the teams and see who you can eliminate based on their alibi. Excellent job, Bravo team. Let's move to Delta team, please. This is the concept of a circuit. Think about a circuit as a circle. If it's closed and completely closed, the electrons can travel around. If the circle's broken, however, or not closed, the circuit, the electrons can't move and we don't get the electricity where we want it. So when I don't close the circuit, the electrons can't flow. But when I do close it by grabbing the other end and make a complete circle, then the electrons can move freely and bring the electricity where we want it. And it causes, in this toy, the lights to light up and the sound to come. Check it out, isn't that cool? Now we're going to talk about circuits with wiring on. It's an appropriate time to tell you kids, do not try this at home. <laughs> What's going to happen when I shine the laser onto the black? What's it going to do to that energy? Is it going to deflect it? Or is it going to absorb it? Absorb it. It's going to absorb it. It's going to cause the balloon to heat up. And what happens when a balloon heats up? Ah. It pops. 
okay? So lasers, extremely powerful form of energy, not to be played around with. Now, another interesting thing about lasers, we have another balloon, so you know it's gonna be another little fun thing. Another interesting thing about lasers is that some forms of electromagnetic radiation can be reflected off of a mirror. Not all of them. Radio waves, too long. Gamma rays, they are actually too small in wavelength that they would actually pass through a mirror. But lasers can actually be reflected off of a mirror. So let's try this. We're going to make this nice and big, see if I can get my reflecting ability. <clears throat> And there, let's see if I can keep it on long enough. And it's reflecting back the energy towards the balloon. The black is doing what with the energy? Is it reflecting it or absorbing it? Absorbing. It's absorbing it. <laughs> and this is a point in time where I want to ask you, why is it taking longer for it to pop? What do you think is happening to the energy in the laser? Some of it's what, I hear it. Tell me, some of it's what? Some of it's Ice water, boiling water, and room temperature water to proof our yeast. What's going to happen is we're going to start with a tablespoon of yeast. Uh, this is a fast acting yeast that we're going to put into the cylinders. You can see T1 and T3 have already been added to their yeast. We're going to add sugar, one teaspoon of sugar to the cylinder, as well as a tablespoon of yeast. And then we're going to be able to add our ice water, room temperature water, and boiling water to see the effects of the fermentation on the three cylinders uh, of our yeast and sugar. Now the yeast needs the sugar to feed off of during the fermentation. So now we're going to start with the room temperature water. This is just warm water that we're adding into the cylinder. And we're going to stir that up to combine the ingredients. Next, we're going to go to the ice water and we're going to pour the ice water down into the ingredients as well. Give me one moment to get the boiling water. Okay, now we have that boiling water that we're going to pour down into our sugar and yeast mixture. We're going to stir these up. And what we want to do is watch how our yeast uh, should, should hopefully grow into our cylinders and we're going to watch those. We can see that right now it's about at uh, probably about 30. We're going to see if we can get some uh, fermentation on these cylinders. So we're just going to watch and see how we go. It's coming out. Oh, it broke. 
So we've looked at a couple of ways to keep some different things constant. For this last experiment, let's keep acceleration constant. Now an easy way to do this is to use the force of gravity. The force of gravity pulls all things down at the same rate. And here on Earth, that rate happens to be 9.8 meters per second squared. This means that if I drop a full water bottle, at the same time as I drop a partially somewhat empty water bottle, they're going to fall at the same time. Now let's talk about why this is the case. Let's say bottle A has twice as much mass as bottle B. That means that it will also have twice as much weight as bottle B. That means that gravity is pulling twice as much on A than it is on B. So that might bring up an idea of, well, if that's the case, how come A is not gonna fall faster since gravity is pulling on it more? The answer is simple. More mass means it's also going to resist more, which means they're gonna end up canceling each other out. And when I drop A and B at the same time, let's see what happens. Okay teams, excellent job. Now I wanna direct your attention to the student interface. So if you will take a look at your computers, you're gonna see that I have now sent you 11 buttons at the top of your student interface. I want you to click on the one that says yoga. It's about the fifth one over. So if you will all click on that now. We are going to see a video here that Dr. Newton and Dr. Law have put together of an example of how Newton's third law occurs in everyday circumstances. And I want you to take your student lab journal, and as we are watching this video together, I want you to jot down as many examples as you can see of those action and reaction pairs that we talked about. Looks like we're going to see a big one here in just a minute, guys. So let's take a look. Oh, yep, sure enough. So there's one obvious example, but there are, of course, many other examples. I want you to discuss it with your team. Write down the examples that you saw of Newton's third law occurring. Okay, just like the polymers we talked about earlier with the baggie, there's something you can do at home with an ordinary balloon. If I were to blow this balloon up, Tie it off. We're going to take a skewer, a wooden skewer. I'm going to put a little bit of lubricant on it, so I'm going to use a little bit of dish detergent. And put it right at the tip. Watch this. You can tell me if this is science or magic. I'm going to take the skewer, and with any luck, I'm going to twist it through. Looks like magic, but it's actually science. 
science. Check it out. All right, Team Delta, excellent job on your presentation about revolution. Now, let's talk about that other word that starts with an R, rotation. Now, the Earth rotates on its axis once every 24 hours. And you've probably seen this if you have a globe in your classroom and you can spin it. You know that that is rotation. Now, what's an easy way, though, for us to remember the direction of that spin? Here's what I want you to do. I want everybody to take your right hand and give me a thumbs up. All right, I see you back there in the back of the room. Nice job. All right, here's what you're gonna do. When you have your right hand with your thumb pointed up, the direction that your fingers are curling uh, demonstrates the direction that the earth is spinning or the rotation of the earth. The thumb pointing up is in that direction of the North Pole and the fingers of the right hand are curled around in that direction. So let me see everybody do it. All right, excellent job, guys. I'm going to give you a thumbs up on rotation. Now let's start talking about the two words, latitude and longitude. You still able to see it? All right, so we've started that central ignition and it's going to take a minute for it to all start to blow but you can already start to see black cinders being blown around the outside are you able to see that all right, now as that starts to cool, I'm going to remove the vent so that some of that gases can escape. And you will be able to see, let me wipe off some of this moisture that we have inside here. All right, are you able to see the cinder cone that is formed? 